In the first part of this problem, we're looking for the average velocity of the car during an 80 kilometer trip where there are two different speeds for different legs of the trip. During the first leg of the trip, the first 40 kilometers, which I'll label as delta x sub 1, we travel for a speed of 30 kilometers per hour, so I'll label that speed as v sub 1. v sub 1 is 30 kilometers per hour. Then for the second leg of the trip, the final 40 kilometers per hour, delta x sub 2, we travel at a speed of 60 kilometers per hour, which I'll label as v sub 2. Now recall that average velocity is given by the formula of being equal to displacement, or delta x for the entire journey, divided by the change in time, or delta t for the entire leg of the journey. Now the problem explicitly tells us what delta x is. It's an 80 kilometer trip, but the time is going to be a little more tricky because we're not told the total time or even the individual time for the individual legs of the journey. We have to figure that out on our own using the speed equation. Recall that speed is equal to distance divided by time. So if we're looking to find the time intervals, we need to solve for t algebraically by multiplying both sides of the equation by t and then dividing both sides of the equation by v to get t on its own. So we find that time is equal to distance divided by speed. So if we want to find the total amount of time, the total time interval for the journey, we need to find t sub 1 and t sub 2, the times for the two different parts of the journey. So first let's start with t sub 1 for the first part of the journey. That is, again, distance divided by speed. So that is 40 kilometers for just that first half of the trip divided by the speed for that first section of the trip, which is 30 kilometers per hour. And if you put that into a calculator, then we find a time of about 1.33 hours. Then we'll do the same thing for T sub 2. So that is, again, 40 kilometers, but this time it's divided by a speed of 60 kilometers per hour, since that is the speed for the second leg of the trip, which gives us 0 0.67 hours. So the total time interval for the trip is going to be the sum of these two smaller parts. So delta t is going to be equal to t sub 1 plus t sub 2, so 1.33 hours plus 0.67 hours for a total time of 2 hours. So, for the average velocity, we take our total displacement, 80 kilometers, and divide by the time of 2 hours. Put that into a calculator, and we find an average velocity of 40 kilometers per hour. And that is the average velocity. Part B of the problem asks us to find the average speed. Now, it's important to understand that the only real difference between speed and velocity is that while speed just represents motion and it, and it just represents how fast an object is moving during its journey, displacement, average velocity being a vector, is based on displacement. So average velocity has to take into account the direction of the trip as well. So if you have an object that's traveling in kind of a curved path, then its average velocity will be different from its average speed because the distance between the starting and ending points in that case is not the same as the distance would have been if it had just been traveling in a straight line. Here's the thing, though. In this problem, we are specifically told that both sections of the journey, the car is traveling in the same direction. The car is only traveling in a straight line. So in this case, the displacement, the distance between the starting point and the ending point, is just a straight line. So what that means is that for this problem, for this scenario, the average speed is the same as the magnitude of the average velocity. So the average speed is just going to be 40 kilometers per hour. So the answers to part A and part B are the same. The final part of the problem asks us to draw a graph of the situation as well as some indication of the average velocity. 
Here is a set of coordinate axes where the vertical axis represents position, delta x, in units of kilometers. And the horizontal axis represents change in time with units of hours. The time interval goes up to two hours, so let's set the upper limit on the graph to two. Split these up as one hour. There's indication of 1.5 hours. Here is 0 0.5 hours. As for the vertical axes, here is 80 kilometers. Then it'll, uh, I'll have it go up in units of 20. There's 20, 40, 60, like so. And as we established in the earlier parts of the problem, the first leg of the scenario takes us to a point of 1.33 hours at 40 kilometers. So 43 kilometers at about 1.33 hours. So somewhere around here is where the first leg of the journey takes us. And then the journey ends, the second leg ends at 2 hours after 80 kilometers. So to represent this as a line, the first leg looks like this. And the second leg has a steeper slope because we seem to have sped up. The problem specifically asks us to, to show how we can represent average displacement on this graph. And remember, average displacement refers to the total distance divided by the total time, without regard for where the intermediate stops are or where the changes in speed are. So we can represent the total change by just drawing a line from the starting point all the way to the ending point. So we can see that this red line, representing the average velocity, has a slope that is clearly greater than the less steep leg, but not as great as the steepest end. The slope of the average velocity is somewhere in the middle. And that is it for this problem. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please consider subscribing, as that'll help me out in making more videos just like this. If you have a request or a question, leave a comment down below, and I'll do my best to help you out as best as I can. That's all for now, and I hope you have a lovely day. Bye-bye.